All right, so in Blender 4.0, the mesh volume node lost some options. This is in 3.6, and you can see we have exterior bandwidth to push outward interior bandwidth to basically like change the thickness if you're not using a fill volume, which is just gonna completely fill it. Uh, so I am distributing in uh, distributing points inside this volume to like make it appear a little differently because that's what I do in like my Lego video and for block blender and stuff like that. But we don't have these options anymore. So I'm going to show you how to kind of get them back in 4.0. It's a little annoying, but you know, we just got to change how we do things a little bit. So here we are in 4.0. I'm just going to add in a mesh like a UV sphere or something like that. It can be kind of anything. Uh, let's go to geometry nodes, add a new node tree. Let's bring in the mesh to volume right here. And I'm going to change this to size so we can choose like the voxel size. I'm going to set that to 0.1. And we do have an interior bandwidth, but it will always be filled. So instead of uh, determining like the thickness of this, basically what it's doing is changing like the density fall off. You can see like when you turn it down low, it looks a little sharper on the edge and when we uh, put it up higher now there's like a, it's dense in the middle and it's not as dense on the edges so that's what that's doing it's not really changing the thickness so we got to do that a little a little differently let's scatter some points in here so we can use a distribute points in volume right here change that to grid and if you do want to instance blocks uh, i show that in my lego video all you have to do is instance on points right here and i'll add in a cube plug that into the instance and uh, to make sure all of these are the right size let's just bring in a value node right here i'll set it to 0.1 and we'll use this for the voxel size for the spacing and also for the instance scale so that the cubes are all the right size like this. And when we don't have it selected, it's a little hard to see. So I'll just, I'll just turn the size down a little bit like that. And if I turn it down a little more, you can see this is completely filled with points. So basically the way we're going to determine uh, how thick we want this to be, we're basically going to look at these points and see how far away all of these points are from the original mesh. And if they're too far away, then we delete them. So the way that we do that is with a geometry proximity node. Uh, and we wanna be referencing the original geometry right here. And if they're far away, I wanna delete them. So I'm gonna use a delete geometry right here. And again, this is before we're instancing on the points. So you can see this outputs points and we're deleting points like that. If you put this after, then you would change this to instance, but I want to see how close the points are. I'll just do it right here. So basically we're going to see if the distance is greater than, so you can bring a greater than and I'll use this value right here. This is the thickness uh, or the size of one block. And then we can use this as the selection and that's, that's it. That's uh. so now this is basically just like one point thick. You can see it's not filled with points anymore. If I mute this, now it's filled with points. So it's a it's pretty easy to see. Yeah. So again, just to explain like what this is doing is uh, I am turning it into a mesh right here and then distributing points. And then I'm checking to see how close those points are uh, from the original mesh. And that's why the target is the original mesh. And I'm seeing I'm saying if the distance uh, of these points is greater than point 0.1, then delete them. So these points that are remaining are actually like close enough to the original geometry that they're not getting deleted. Uh, if you did want this to be thicker, basically you could just multiply this value. So if you want it to be two blocks thick, you're just going to multiply this by two. So we can do that with a math node. Uh, let's just drop it in, set it to multiply and multiply it by two. It's a little harder to tell um, once it gets to this point, so it might be easier with uh, instancing on the points right here. We can change the size a little bit. You can see it like getting thicker as I change it. So we have a little more control uh, doing it this way. One of the downsides is that in this version right here, we also have the exterior bandwidth which is basically just going to push outward like that if you want something to be thicker on the outside instead of on the inside and we don't have that option here so 
you would either basically have to there are a few ways to do it none of them are really going to give you the same result uh because of weird like overlapping mesh issues and things like that but you could extrude this with an just like with an extrude node ex extrude like that so that is pushing outward but uh let's set this to one you can see that even though i set it to one it's not uh, just one block thick. It's definitely more thick. Uh, one reason is because of this individual thing right here. If we just take a look at this, it's pushing each face out individually. So I can turn that off. Now let's take a look. Now it is working, but this is a nice clean shape too. This is a sphere. So if we change this to like something else, if we change this to like, uh, first of all, if we change it to a plane, it's just not really gonna work. The way extruding works with geometry nodes is it doesn't leave the original face. So basically, if you were going to use this for a plane, you would have to treat it differently than if you're using it for something that's completely solid and enclosed, because a plane is not a plane, is just one single face. It has no inside. So when it's trying to turn it into a volume, like it, it can't because there's no inside. And that's why it's kind of trying to turn the uh like the edges themselves into volume it's kind of weird and bugged but basically you would have to get a join geometry right here and join it with the original geometry now for some reason this works but what i would recommend normally is you want to flip the face right here um and you can see what that's doing basically uh th this should be pointing down and this should be pointing up uh, and unless you flip the faces, then this one's going to be pointing up also, which is kind of, you know, that's just the way it works. And then you would want to merge by distance so that it's actually connected. And you can actually see over here the points, the amount of points changing. Uh, it's because right here, uh, the corners, the vertices are going to be overlapping. So we're getting rid of four points when we merge. Now, like it works for some reason without you doing all of the merge by distance and the flipping and stuff. But uh, I would recommend doing that just like as a, a best practices sort of thing. Another downside with this method is let's just go back to this is if you're using something that has like more complex structure like a uh, Suzanne right here. Let's take a look. So if I set this to zero and slowly turn it up, you'll notice that it's getting thicker, but there's also kind of overlapping faces that happen, that start happening. And if I push it far enough, some of these spots right here are like inside spots that are like pushing outward and it's just like clipping through itself. And if we look at the wireframe, we have like a lot of internal geometry, which messes things up when it's trying to figure out the distance to the original mesh, because now we have faces on the inside. So like right over here, it's like a lot thicker than it needs to be. And that's just, it's a little annoying. I'm not entirely sure what would be best to do. I tried using a Boolean to try to merge everything into one shape and get rid of the interior faces and that didn't really work well. So maybe turning it into a volume like this and then back into a mesh, volume to mesh right here. Now that should get rid of the internal faces, but you're also like adding way more points by doing this. You have to like control the resolution a little more and stuff because you're basically remeshing at this point. So that does work. And now we just have like, we, we can change the thickness and we don't have to worry about the distance to the edge and all that. But uh, it's not a very like graceful solution compared to uh, having the option to just do it. It's just built in like over here. It's just built in and it's pretty nice. We don't have to worry about overlapping faces or anything like that. So let me just show you real quick up close. This is how everything would be set up. If you need to take a screenshot, then go ahead. That's pretty much it. So this is going to be helpful for following along with the Lego video that I did about a year ago, or if you're trying to like make block blender on your own or some similar thing or just voxelizing anything really. If you don't want to extrude it, you can use the solidify modifier. You could just set position in the normal direction, but you're pretty much going to have the same issues that I showed no matter what. And you just kind of have to decide what you want to do. One way might be better than another, depending on your circumstance, but it's entirely circumstantial. Anyway, that's it for this one. Hopefully this helps some of you and uh, have a good one.